Hey everybody, it's your average jeweler again. I'm back talking about precious gemstones versus semi-precious gemstones. And like many things that I talk about, you'll find some interesting distinctions between what the average person thinks about these and what jewelers actually think about this. And we're gonna talk about some misunderstandings, some misconceptions, and yes, like everything, there's going to be disagreement, but I think it's good to talk about what we think these are and what they actually are and how people use these terms. So let's get into it and talk about precious gemstones versus semi-precious gemstones. Welcome back. If you're here for the first time, this is a channel where we, ch we talk about jewelry and things related to gemstones and jewelry. And it relates to today's topic, which is precious gemstones versus semi-precious gemstones. Now, I want to go back way, way into the history of gemstones and take a look at where this actually came from. Now, this is not a new terminology, um, certainly, the English words for it are probably going to be different than what you might find in other parts of the world. But here in the United States and in most English speaking countries, you'll hear the terms precious and semi-precious in regards to different gemstones. Now, if you go back hundreds of years and actually thousands of years in most cases, you're going to find strong agreement in what most people considered to be the most valuable gemstones. For most of history, the big three, as they're often known in colored gemstones, would be your sapphires, rubies, and emerald. Now, oftentimes people will consider diamond a part of precious gemstones as well, but if you're talking about colored stones, which I think they're more commonly used for, you're going to be again talking about sapphires, rubies, and emeralds. A thing to add to that is that in many years past, amethyst actually used to be considered a precious gemstone, or at least it was categorized as one of the more valuable gemstones along with the three big gemstones. And it wasn't until many years later, uh, until this century in fact, that a large find of amethyst in Brazil made it a much more common gemstone. And then of course you have large finds that have happened in Russia. And in modern day gemstones, most of the time amethyst is not as highly regarded as it once was. Now of course the purple color of it does play into that where purple has often been a color for royalty. And certainly that is going to be something just by association that gives amethyst a little bit of a a leg up on some of its other gemstones that it that it might be near but the reality is amethyst being quartz it is a much more prevalent and naturally occurring gemstone than some of these others we're talking about so in modern day you don't typically hear amethyst at all regarded in the same way as you would sapphire ruby and emerald now we fast forward to today and we've developed this terminology of precious gemstones and semi-precious gemstones. So most of the time when you hear this, precious gemstones are a reference to either sapphire, ruby, or emerald. Now I'm sure that some people do use it a little bit more broadly, but in my interactions when someone says a precious gemstone, they're probably referring to one of those. I'll get into some of the other ways we can and do use it, but for the sake of reference, that's the most common use of precious gemstones. So, what are semi-precious gemstones? It's essentially a reference to any gemstone that is not regarded as precious. Uh, typically, if it's a gemstone and not just a rock or a stone that most people don't associate with what is a gemstone, and there are some actual definitions of gemstones, but again, for the sake of this video, you can basically think of any gemstone that is not sapphire, ruby, and emerald as semi-precious. Now that's the background of it. Why is this a problem or why do we need to really talk about it? Because it sounds like it's pretty simple and straightforward. 
Um, most people with that little bit of information would be able to take that anywhere they go and make sense of it. But unfortunately, it gets a bit more confusing. So what's the problem with this terminology? The biggest problem is that we often equate these terms with the value of said gemstones. And if you've watched some of my other videos, you've probably come to the conclusion that the quality of the gemstone and the rarity of the gemstone are very much the biggest factors when it comes to value. Now, it is true that ruby, sapphire, emerald are some of the more rare minerals that you're going to find. And so they are much more rare in terms of just how much of them there are in the earth than most other gemstones. But even right there, you start running to, into some problems because you have a lot of very rare and what some would call collector gemstones out there that there are very few and far between. Um, one example I can think of is a stone called Benitoite and a particular gemstone dealer that I know uses and actually sells this type of gemstone, there's only a handful of it available and there's only a couple finds that have ever existed for this particular gemstone. So every year, usually at the Tucson gemstone, uh, gem show, they'll bring a allotted assortment of Benitoite and it sells out within a few hours uh, because those that are looking for it know it's going to be there and know there's not a lot of it to go around and it just sells off and it's very expensive and you're probably not going to see any for another year it's just a, a very rare gemstone considered a collector's gemstone now why would something like that not be considered a precious gemstone again you can start to see a little bit of a problem in the way we use these terms um, the bigger point though, aside from the example of rarity and some stones and minerals actually being more rare, the bigger problem is that the quality of the gemstones is all over the place. Emerald's an easy one to pick on. Emeralds notoriously have a lot of inclusions. And when you find a clean emerald, it is incredibly rare. And there are not a lot of clean emeralds that we can find. So when the average person is going out looking for an emerald, it's not uncommon for it to be included and maybe even look a little bit hazy because of that. So you have this reality of heavily included emeralds and many of them are so included to the point where they're very inexpensive. So now you're dealing with a large percentage of emeralds actually being pretty inexpensive just for the fact that they don't have a high quality to them versus a stone like amethyst as we mentioned or maybe garnet where these stones have a very high probability of finding a clean and clear crystal and if you were selling a beautiful garnet or a beautiful amethyst versus a commercial quality or a very low grade emerald you're going to see that the value could actually favor the amethyst or the garnet, even though you're comparing it to an emerald. The same thing goes for sapphire and ruby. You can find them in very low quality, and you can find other gemstones and different varieties of garnet that are gonna be far more expensive because the quality is nicer and they still have an element of rarity to them. I can think of many other gemstones that would fall into this semi-precious category. Uh, you have your morganite and your tourmaline. I mentioned the different varieties of garnets. I have a video talking about how garnets are a much bigger class of gemstone than we realize. The point is, if I look at something like tourmaline, that's a stone I'm pretty familiar with, that can be a very expensive gemstone. And there are certainly some stones, whether it's the specific color or whether it's by color or whether it's just a large size, it's going to make it a much more valuable stone than say a ruby or a sapphire of a lower quality. With all that said, if the qualities are equal and you're dealing with a clean, vividly colored sapphire versus a clean, vividly colored tourmaline, you're definitely going to have a more valuable stone in the sapphire. Same for ruby, same for emerald. So to that point, you could argue that they are blanketly more valuable gemstones. 
But when I see someone look at an emerald ring, and it's obviously a low quality emerald ring, and they go, oh, that's precious, and then they pick up a beautiful green garnet ring with a Savorite garnet in it and go, oh, that's semi-precious, it feels skewed, to say the least. I think these terms have really become outdated and they've become more confusing than helpful, where in the past it might have been easy to just make that clean separation, precious versus semi-precious. I think we're in a time where you actually muddy the waters by using that terminology and you imply that somehow this stone is more valuable um, just because it's in a family of gemstones that has notoriously been valuable or been worth more. So we need to be very cautious on how we use that terminology and in reality I think it's probably time to retire those terms but at least talking about it like this you understand what they are so if you're talking about it in any given context you at least are aware what someone might be referring to when they use those terms. Now the last thing is do jewelers use these terms? And honestly, they don't like to for the most part. Now, I can't speak for every jeweler or gemstone dealer, but most of them and the majority of them that I run into do not like to use the terminology precious and semi-precious because many of them are dealing with these beautiful gemstones that wouldn't traditionally be considered precious gemstones. And a lot of the time we would rather have them because the alternative is to pick up a lower quality emerald or a lower quality ruby uh, because again those higher quality examples in fairness to their name of being precious gemstones it's going to cost you maybe 10 times as much to get one of those stones where you can get a beautiful tourmaline for a similar price I would not sit here and say that they are completely outdated and that no one should use them however I can speak for most jewelers and at least say the terminology is not as helpful as it is probably hurtful to what we're trying to accomplish and how we're trying to distinguish and describe gemstones. Because at the end of the day, they're words that are hope hopefully helping us to describe what we're dealing with. And if they're not doing a good job at describing what we're dealing with, do we really need to use them? My answer is no. Let me know what you think down in the comments as far as whether you think precious and semi-precious terminology should still be used. Maybe you even think that it should just be used in an evolving way and somehow we should get together and decide how we're going to use them. I'm curious what all the thoughts are, are for those that are out there watching this. As always, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you'll come back in the other videos so we can keep continuing to learn together.